So a while back I made mention that I received a bimetal heat break from Slice Engineering and that video didn't quite garner the response that I had hoped that it would. Uh, based on the number of downvotes, I kind of anticipate that you guys don't want me to put a bimetal heat break into my machines. So without further ado, I'd like to thank Slice Engineering for sending me one of their bimetal heat breaks. I'm going to be installing this along with a Slamazon special plated copper heat block. And for the first time ever, I'm going to be doing some fancy schmancy voiceover work. So without further ado, let's crack open the machine and get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start out by taking out the button head screws that hold the fan shroud in place and move that off to the side. Next, we'll take off the silicone boot. Get yourself a good quality set of Allen keys because this makes the job a little bit easier and you don't strip out your grub screws. Remove the grub screw from the heat break. Remove the two screws from the bottom of the heater block that hold the block in place. Use a small wrench to pry down on the heat block to get it free from the heat sink. Take out the heating element. And then realize, hey, I left the power on. So next we're going to remove the thermistor. Slide the heater block out of the heat sink. If we look at the two blocks side by side, we'll see that they're very similar to one another. There are some additional holes in the new unit, but that's not going to be a big deal. That's for additional types of thermistors. The Heat break itself is a little bit longer as far as the large diameter of the body goes, but ultimately they're about the same length from threaded end to threaded end. What we're going to do now is put the nozzle in finger tight and then back it out one and a half ish or so turns. Next we'll screw in the heat break and you want the top of the threads to be flush with the top of the heat block. And if you need to, loosen up the nozzle a little bit until it's nice and flush. Looking at the two side by side, you can see that they're about the same length. And you can still make some adjustments if necessary. The BL touch was in the way from tightening down the thermistor wires, so I moved that out of the way real quick. Put the heating element back in. Make sure it's flush with the left hand side of the block and then just tighten the grub screw to get it so that it's nice and secure. Don't over tighten it, just make it snug. Next we'll bring the hot end to temperature and we'll snug down the nozzle and put everything back together because it's a job well done. But wait, there's more. Because nothing could ever be that easy, you realize that the hot end is PTFE lined and you forgot to put in that little piece of PTFE that you should have placed into that hot end when you had it all apart. So you take the hot end off of the machine only to realize there's no hole in the top. So take everything back apart. Get yourself a little piece of PTFE tube. In my case, I'm using Capricorn. Cut it to the length that'll fit inside. Doesn't have to be overly tight. The heat break itself will actually bottom out inside the heat sink. So just make it so that the PTFE tube doesn't interfere with that. And then tighten everything back down. And now we're ready to power the machine on, do our PID tuning, and we can start doing our test print. Now that we have our machine back together and powered up, we can run a PID tuning on the nozzle. I have a macro button called PID Nozzle, so all I have to do is click on that and it'll run the routine. But if you don't have that, right here in my printer.cfg, I have a G-code macro called PID Nozzle. And then all it does is it runs through the turn off heaters command, which will make sure that everything is cooled down to room temperature. It then does a PID Calibrate command and then a save config, which will save and restart the firmware. When you run the 
PID calibration, it'll take a few minutes. It takes a good four or five minutes because the nozzle comes up to temperature and then it fluctuates. And as it's raising and lowering, it's doing the PID tuning to make sure that it senses the fluctuations and that everything is tuned to that particular temperature. Whenever you change temperatures, it's probably good practice to redo a PID calibration depending on the range that you try to work in. I like to print a lot of PLA plus and PETG. So I PID tune at 230, 240, and it seems to work well for the materials that I've been printing. Once we run the PID calibration, then we do a calibrate probe, which is nothing more than a probe underscore calibrate command. And the probe calibrate command is important because when you want to double check your Z offset, you run the probe calibrate. It will bring the probe over. In my case, BL touch. It'll come over. It'll touch a spot on the table. Then it'll move the nozzle to that same spot and it will bring up a Z offset setting menu that you use with your piece of paper to set your Z offset. So here's a quick money shot after the PID tuning was done. The overall part quality looks very good considering the fact that I haven't tuned in pressure advance just yet, but it seems like this is a winner. I'm going to do the exact same modification on my other machine. I actually purchased the second slice engineering heat break, so if anything goes wrong, I can badmouth it all I want. But once again, I'd like to thank Slice Engineering for sending me the Copperhead heat break. Because it was such a success, I ordered a second one for my Neptune 2, and we'll be doing the exact same modification. If you're interested in the Amazon heat block or the Slice Engineering heat break, take a look in the description for affiliate links. If you go to the Slice Engineering website and you use the coupon code, the Feral Engineer, you'll save 5% off of your order. And if you spend over $50, you'll get free shipping. So that about wraps it up for this video. I hope you learned something because I know I sure did. If you like this type of content and you haven't yet, please make sure you subscribe to the channel. It really helps with my endeavors going forward. If you have any particular requests for future videos, let me know in the comments below. Thank you all for watching and we'll see you soon.